over at the 18th Michael Allen has this for birdie to tie Fred Couples. It's going to slide to his right. You can see he's aiming well outside the hole on the left. Be nice to post a score and let Fred see it. Burn the edge. Just a little more. If he'd added a little bit to the left or hit it a little harder, he would have made it. Now, Michael Allen knocked his putt in at 18 for four. Now, Fred Couples, very awkward stance. John, we've talked all week long about you must avoid these bunkers, and this is a perfect illustration of it right now. This is so tough. Freddie's got an awkward stance, balls up against the lip. He's got to get it up quick. Off downhill a downhill line. line, yeah. It is. This is a predicament that if he gets this ball within 12 to 15 feet, it's going to be an incredible shot. He's got to come up on over, over a ridge that's between himself and the hole. I mean, you cannot, if you're, if you're playing with your buddy, you're going to put him in a bad spot to try to get the ball up and down. This is where you put it. And yeah, he's got a terrific short game. He's going to need all of it right here. He's got to set wide open. Keep the face wide open. Cut across it. Slow down. And roll off the back edge. John, just not much of a chance there, guys. And that's not a very good lie over there, Billy Ray. I've got a clump of grass behind it, so it's not over yet. Let's see how close it was to the lip. Trying to get it up in the air quick. Look from this angle. Big swing, trying to cut across it, pop it straight up in the air. Now Jeff Sluman not out of it yet. Well, this one not easy either. If you're gonna one to 10, couples with this 10 is hard. This one's about an eight. He got that club up quickly and yeah, hit the. Oh my! <laughs> Lovely shot right there. That's about <laughs> as good as you could do there, Billy Ray. Uh, it certainly was, John. Yeah, he wouldn't want that one over. And now, Fred. Taking his time, you know. So many times you get in the situation after you get a bad break off the tee. Of course, of course you put it in that position, but he tends to play quickly sometimes. But he is, he is thinking this shot out right now. And you said, John, the line is not perfect. The grain of the grass goes with him. I check that against him. And it's sitting down a bit. He's got to come up with a little slope, too. So he's got to carry this ball on the green. Yeah, put it back in his stance, hands forward. A little stab at it. And he'll still have some work. Not for bogey. And Jim Thorpe will be next for birdie. Johnny hit a beautiful tee shot, speaking of Thorpe, and he hit five iron just as Sluman and his couples did, and it actually scared the hole. He hit it right at it. He's hit some some solid golf shots today, right at the flag stick. And I spoke with him on the, the tenth hole. He says, you know, he just um, had to settle my nerves through the front nine. He said it didn't set up very well for me with a lot of pole location. He didn't feel comfortable with. And he said uh, on the back nine, I'm just going to let it go. And uh, he's hit some nice shots here. Hadn't hold many putts, but he's he's played solid though. Yeah, the, but this is a great week for him because he's got all the shots in the bag. He just didn't know if he still had them. He does, so. You That's know. a good point, John. Yeah. You got to check to see if you have them. You know, most of these guys out here are the best players in the world on the Champions Tour, and they got the shots in the bag. But can you utilize those shots under pressure? That's the whole key. I mean, he always has 13 wins out here, one major. I mean, he's got a lot of experience. He just lost some time, but he'll be all right coming back. You build on it. Yeah, that 
might have just been a bad read. A good speed on it, though. Yeah, only been three birdies here all day, so he's a good score. Second hardest hole all week. Jim Tharp with his par. Not really happy with that result. Uh, that's all right, Jim. Hang in there. Well, John, both Sluman and Couples uh, know exactly where they stand right now, and there's a huge scoreboard just down the fairway here at the par 317th, and both Couples and Sluman took a good long look to see exactly where they, they yeah. stood, and so. Yeah, must make for Jeff Sluman right here. Be a terrific up and down from the bunker. Nope. Well, you miss a green here, it can be very costly. Bogey for Jeff Sluman. First bogey of the day. Look at Michael Allen signing autographs. That was exactly where he stands at this point. Now back to Fred Couples. John, this is a good maybe four and a half feet left for Couples, but not much break. This will test your stroke. Second to last hole of the event. This for bogey. Fred Couples, bogey 17. We've got a tie ball game. Stay with us to see what happens on the 18th. Well, we're tied. Heading to the 18th. Let's show you how we got there. Fred Couples at the par 5 15th. This was his third shot. Wet, sloppy lie, and he just didn't catch it cleanly. Then he had this for par. That bogey dropped him back to 14 under par. And then on the tee at 17. There's a five iron. This one surprised me a little bit. I thought if he missed either way, he would try to play out to the right a little bit. This bunker is the last place you want to be. And then he had a very difficult stance for his second shot. No chance from there to get it close. Couldn't even keep it on the green. He would make another bogey, and now he's tied with Michael Allen playing the 18th. There's a look at this at his scorecard. Yesterday, he started poorly, finished strong. Today, he, fin he started strong and now appears to be finishing poorly. It surprises me a little bit. He. Uh... He has definitely hit some shots that I didn't think Fred Couples would hit down the stretch. Michael Allen knows the situation, taking the time to sign a few autographs, and who knows, that might be the autograph of the eventual champion. Assume he needs a two. And he's going with three wood, so Sluman just trying to put this ball in the fairway, Billy Ray, not going for the length. Yeah, that, and that's the smart thing. You, you must if, if you're going to make two here, and that's what he needs. He's got to put the ball in the fairway. But the players have the advantage here at 18 today, playing downwind breeze about 10 to 15 miles an hour. So he'll be able to get this three wood there down there far enough to have a decent look at it with his second. Well done there. It'll be interesting to see what Fred does here at the uh, 18th tee. And he, yeah, well, he just answered my question. Does he stay aggressive and try to go a little bit more down the left side, or does he go with three wood? And he's going with driver, Billy Ray. Yeah, I'm back down the fairway, and Kurt, I was I was waiting to let you uh, tell me what he. I can't believe he's going with this. Uh, he's staying aggressive. He's dripping the ball nicely here on the back side. That big tree down the right side. That's the fallen oak. This will get him past that if he does block it a little bit. I think he likes it. This could leave him just a pitching wedge or even less possibly. Well, it well should. A little unlucky there, Kurt. That ball hit into the ridge and didn't run out much, but he's still going to have a short shot left. 
Now that's way down there, though. There's the flag stick in the back left. Fred he Couples needs birdie to avoid a playoff. While we have a moment, let's send you down to David Marr. Here with a man who knows exactly where he stands right now, Michael Allen tied at the top of the leaderboard with Fred Couples just teeing off 18. Your thoughts and your plans for the next 15 minutes or so? Well, I'm just, I guess, waiting around now to see what happens. Uh, he should have a good birdie putt here, I would think. Um, you know, it's been a nice day, so I'm going to, I feel pretty good. I may go hit a couple balls and kind of make sure to stay loose here. Hopefully I'll do better in my last playoff, so, you know, uh, yeah. You watching the leaderboard all day long? You know what, I haven't really, I knew I was doing well. I just, I knew I had to get 13, 14 to kind of have a chance. So that was kind of my goal. I just kind of kept playing to that point. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that, well, I mean, I know there's some couple of tough finishing holes. And I know Fred was at 15, I saw that. So, you know, I was really trying to get birdie on 16 and 15 and, or 16 and 17. So, uh, you know, but he, luckily he's let me in the game a little bit. So, got a chance, it's nice. You mentioned your last playoff. That was in the Constellation Energy Senior Players Championship. Omira beat you. He's a Masters champ. You might go up against a Masters champion here. Any mindset as far as you're concerned when you get mano a mano in a playoff? You know, I haven't been in many in my life, to be honest. A couple qualifying when I was younger, and I was always able to get through those. I did lose that one with uh, Mark, and I think I kind of lost my focus a little bit. So I'm going to go try and get a little more focus this time and be ready to go. You're a major champion, too. Go get focused. Thank you. Back to you, Brian. Well, he certainly did what he had to do today. Look at that scorecard. Go out, went out in 32, 34 on the back. No bogeys on the card, 66. And that got him the 13 under par right now tied with Fred Couples. He had a pretty good putt there on the last hole as well. So that's how huge that putt would have been. Fred Couples. Probably a little bit surprised to be in this situation. Had a chance to really put it away. Those two par fives on the back nine would play those two holes at one over. Now, with that drive though, because he hit driver and he found the middle of the fairway, Fred Couples is going to have a really short club in for his second shot. And, you know, he's that kind of a player with that talent that he has. It, it's he's sort of that guy you expect for this ball to just go right at it and at least be pretty close where he has a chance to uh, make a putt for birdie. What does he have left, BR? Well, he's got 130 yards, and Kirchie hit the nail right on the head. He's driven it so far down there. He sets himself up with a with a nice angle. Even that that whole location on the left side and that bunker comes into play. He will not even be looking at that situation. He'll be looking right down the flag stick. Watch your shadow, please. Jim Thorpe will play first. Yeah, he's in the right hand side of the fairway, which sets up also a good angle. But uh, it's just a dangerous hole location to get close. It's downwind. The green's starting to firm up. He has 170 yards left. And you'd like to see Jim end on a good note here. He's hit some quality iron shots coming down the stretch, just has not made any putts. Big bounce, big bounce and go left. Go, go. Still trying to use that slope to his advantage. It'll curl around and move back to his left a bit. That, not bad at all. And from that far back, that was a good decision, I think. You know, anything, if he goes at the flag stick and leaves it in that bunker in front there, that bunker is really deep. So that's the last place you want to be. And Kurt, as we after they hit their tee shots here, the wind has picked up and it's downwind, which makes this second shot for Sluman and Couples a bit harder with huh? yep. not okay. much room to fit it in on the left hand side. Good target here. Pretty much just straight down for you. Good target, trust it. Well, sits atop the hill, 160 yards. Indirectly back in the fair, if you're the player, you're looking over that flag stick, you have to, the bunker's right in front of you. First objective, get over that bunker. Downhill, downwind, no more than a nine iron, I don't think. And that was a nine iron and um, not his best. You'll still see it slope, but just a hard hole location to get at. Well, Sluman has been eliminated. He can't win. 
Yeah, what a setting here, guys, at the 18th. It is packed here. The tents are packed. They're all yelling for couples. He puts people in seats, doesn't he? He certainly does, and he, he's such a, a, a great player to watch. They're certainly getting their money's worth here today. Coming down to the wire. Well, with this kind of club in his hands, though, this is where you just expect him to stuff one in there. I mean, I, it would not surprise me one bit if it's inside of 10 feet. Um, just his gap wedge, so. Inside 10 feet, he'll have that for the win. It's been a little sloppy coming down the finish. He's got a chance to finish it off with a birdie when we come back. Michael Allen staying loose on the practice tee just in case. We got to figure out who's going to lead. Fred Couples, though, has a good look at birdie here at the 18th. Jeff Sluman will play first. It's going to be another close call for Jeff here at the Mississippi Gulf Resort Classic. Tied for second here a year ago. Said the first couple of times he played this course two years ago when they first came here, didn't really like it. And then a few rounds into it, he said, you know what? This course really does suit my game. Yeah, the reason he didn't like it is because he didn't think that his game really fit the golf course. But then the more he played it, he realized that it was a good ball strikers golf course, which he, of course, is. He's really steady normally from tee to green. He's going to get another top three finish, it appears. I noticed Fred went over and kind of looked at Sluman's line just for a second there to see if it was close enough to his line that he could get some sort of idea off of Sluman's putt. He certainly did, Kurt, and he looked at it for quite some time, and he is going to get a little help, speaking of couples from Sluman's putt. He's basically right on top of the ridge here, coming straight downhill the whole way, downhill and down grain. Big putt coming back for third place outright. Charles Schwab Cup points. What'd you like, man? Well, Jim Thorpe and he he has to be pretty happy with with this week. Even par today. Brian, I spoke with him back on the green on 17 about that as couples and Sluman were finishing up uh, the hole. And he says, you know, I just need to put myself in the situation a little more. He said, and the nerves got the best of me on the front side, but uh, he said I'd settle down. And he said, but I still need to put myself in this position some more. To get comfortable, he says, just never really felt comfortable. And he said, but I hit some good shots when I needed to. But he said, I need to have that comfort zone in this situation. The big fella back in contention, 63 years old. Had he won today, he would have been the oldest winner ever on the Champions Tour. He's proving that he's still in good enough shape and still has the game that he might someday break through <laughs> and get that record. Now, Sluman for par. And obviously, as quick as his first putt was, Sluman's second putt's going to be uphill into the grain, so he has to hit this firm. Well, 
that'll drop Sluman back into a tie for third place with Tom Pernice Jr. And the putter let Jeff Sluman down on the back nine today. And Ford's going to finish. Clearing the stage for Fred Couples. His back really bothering. Got the procedure done again in Los Angeles. He's feeling better. It's been an up and down week for him, ball striking wise, but here he is at the 54th hole with a birdie putt and a chance to win for the seventh time on the Champions Tour. And I don't think this putt does a whole lot. I mean, it, it, I almost want to say it's on that line that it might go just a hair to the right, but I just don't think it does a lot. And he's close enough to the hole. I mean, he's only 10 feet away. Probably doesn't want to give much of the hole away. Seventeen couples birdies the 18th to win the Mississippi Golf Resort Classic. One more look. Never a doubt. His first win of 2012. Michael Allen on the practice tee. All he had to do was listen to the crowd, and oh, yeah, he knows what happened. It's time now for our Mississippi Gulf Resort Classic shot of the tournament. And we only have to go back a few seconds. Fred Couples for birdie at the 18th and the win. Down to David. Thanks a lot, Brian. You show off, bogeying those holes and then saving it for this. Yeah, I showed off. Actually, I, I played very well. And to be honest, in my mind on that second shot on the par five, I knew I was going to hit a squirrely shot. I just can't get down to those downhill eyes. All I had was a cleek. And then you're going to laugh. I told myself to just chip it 20 feet by at a two shot lead. And uh, luckily, Michael didn't make another birdie, or there's no way I would have made that. But, you know, it was a fun day. Um, I hit the ball pretty well. Looking forward to Houston next week and then Augusta, but uh, very lucky to end up birding this hole. I can tell you that much. You seem almost uh, emotional at this point. Is there uh, something behind no, that? No, no, no. Nothing's bothering me. I just, you know, when you're playing, you're working so hard, and to hit a drive like that and make a six on a par five, you know, I mean, I know my, I knew Michael was uh, making a run. Six under was a great score, and I was playing with Jeff, who couldn't make a putt so making a six there I mean I'm ready to kill myself but you know I, I wasn't expecting uh, three on the last hole but I had an easy putt it was straight down grain it rolled nice and uh, it went in but no, I, you know there's no time to figure out the end of the round but to bogey a couple holes 17 is a very hard hole but you just can't make bogeys on par fives from 240 yards in the middle of the fairway well congratulations and Brian right. they'll remember that three not the six right, thank you absolutely an exciting finish Fred Couples wins by one. Kind of telling. It sounded like the back was bothering him. He couldn't get down to the downhill lies. Yeah, it's sensitive on some of those tough lies. 
Here's the current standings. Bernhard Langer continues to lead the Charles Schwab Cup standings. Fred Couples moves into fourth place with his win in Biloxi, Mississippi. Well, the Champions Tour will take a couple of weeks off and we'll reconvene in Tampa on Friday, April 13th for the Encompass Insurance Pro-Am of Tampa Bay. So what a week it was. We had a lot of rain to start, a beautiful weekend weather-wise, and Fred Couples made it exciting, birdieing the last to win for the seventh time on the Champions Tour. For all of us at the Golf Channel, I'm Brian Hammonds. Good afternoon from Biloxi, Mississippi. This has been a presentation on the only worldwide network dedicated to the game, Golf Channel, part of NBC Sports.